Cool, we'll officially get started. So my name is Tomo Nakahara. I'm the head of developer experience here at a company called Weaveworks. And hopefully you are here for a full workshop. You have brought your laptops, you're prepared uh, to get free get ups. We um, are going to be showcasing um, an open source and uh, free offering that we uh, soft launched and announced at GitOps Days. Uh, so hopefully if you heard of that, you're here to go through that. If you haven't heard of it, no problem. Uh, we'll be giving kind of a, a quick intro on what the vision is and what the uh, um, solutions are for this um, Weave GitOps. And then hopefully you'll stick around as we go through all the steps. And that's why we've set aside uh, you know, up to two hours to troubleshoot and make sure that you're all successful. So I'll be introducing later our two uh, key speakers. So we're really excited that we have Jose Talavera on our um, team here, who's a solutions architect, who will be um, doing kind of the, the vision and the quick intro, and uh, like kind of the end goal of like, why would you wanna go through these steps and, and why you would be excited about this. And then um, our own uh, Paul Fremantle, VP of engineering, will actually be walking you through the steps. And so we're gonna make sure that we walk you through everything. If anybody gets stuck, don't be shy, raise your hand. Uh, we will make sure we'll help you through and we've got other engineers on hand to both um, get you through uh, the steps successfully as well as observe and um, take notes so that we can make sure that we're um, improving our docs and improving everything the whole time. So we really appreciate that you're taking the time to uh, hang out with us. So if you've never heard of us, we're called Weaveworks. Our website is weave.works. And um, we have a couple of products, but really so much of what, uh, if you've heard of us, you've probably heard about our open source. We're very founded in open source. Uh, among our many, many projects, uh, two that we'll highlight are uh, Flux, and underneath that is Flagger, is um, a CNCF incubation project, as well as Cortex, um, which were both created within Weaveworks and continue to thrive with great open source uh, communities. Uh, Flux especially, we are very much on our way to getting it to graduation within the CNCF. And it's really kind of the core part of what got us to the term GitOps and led us to even coin that. Um, and then Flagger, which we've put underneath that umbrella has provided progressive delivery that many people have used um, either with Flux um, or with other tools. And so it's really been exciting to see um, people follow us on this journey. And um, so Weave GitOps, which we'll be covering today, is actually built on Flux. So we knew that we had the most powerful engine um, out there for GitOps, and we wanted to make sure that we uh, would be able to reach a wider range of users. So between Flux or Weave GitOps, like we have a variety of offerings that depending on where you are, um, on your background, your knowledge, um, and your maybe sometimes time constraints or team constraints, um, but you want GitOps to be brought into your team, into your companies, hopefully between Flux and Weave GitOps, you'll be able to see now um, what offerings work for you. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so like I said, we've got Jose Talavera, Solutions Architect, and Paul Fremantle, the VP of Engineering. Um, I'll be here emceeing and helping to manage any of the questions. Um, because this is, if you came to our previous ones, we did like a one hour one, but because this is a workshop, um, as long as people behave nicely and you're not shy, um, I'm open to opening your microphone as well, if that's easier. Otherwise I'll be, <clears throat> sorry, monitoring the chat. Um, and so if you're going to do that, hopefully people know how to use Zoom, especially during these COVID times, but the best way to ask questions is through um, the chat function. And I'll be monitoring that and relaying that to the team. Uh, and as I mentioned, we had just done GitOps Days 2021. Um, the website is gitopsdays.com. Um, uh, Stacy on our team is our community manager has put out a couple of the videos, but if you wanna see all the videos in the event and the event in its entirety, you can still go register at gitopsdays.com to have early access to that. Um, and then you'll be able to also see sort of the longer version um, of sort of the pitch around Weave GitOps that our CTO Cornelia Davis uh, gave at that event. So please check that out. So with that, uh, as I mentioned, Jose will do um, a GitOps, a Weave GitOps overview, and then we will jump right in and hopefully you have your laptops ready and we'll get you going through the steps. So with that, I will hand it over to Jose. Thank you very much, Samal, thank you. And did you uh, need us to help get you through the slides? I yes, I need Paul to share the few slides. Here we go. We can see it now. 
All right. Uh, so in the next um, around 15 minutes, um, I'm gonna um, spend, you know, um, doing a quick introduction to um, with GitOps and I think it's more into the GitOps methodology. Now, just a few words about myself. So I'm solutions architect, as Tamal said. And honestly, I, I heard about the term GitOps only you know, one or two years ago. Um, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. Less complexity tooling overall and more developer efficiency. Um, then I realized it is more than that. Uh, it aims the whole SDLC. So, and that is why I'm exclusively focused um, on GitOps these days. <laughs> so it so sounds a, little, a bit like a joke, but it's pretty close to reality. So with GitOps, um, what is with GitOps? Honestly, you know, um, I didn't know that term um, until a month ago. So I can't expect everyone to know um, what it is. Moreover, it was actually announced at the GitHub days that Tamar mentioned, and it was uh, three weeks ago. Um, and if you couldn't join, then please, you know, um, we share the, the the link. You can go there, register, and you have, you know, you you can see all the re the, the talks. Um, so it's pretty convenient. It's pretty easy to to navigate. Paul, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, now, before we go into the details of with GitOps and the benefits of uh, GitOps, uh, let me set the scene, right? With an analysis done by the DevOps Research Assessment Organization, which establishes a correlation, pretty interesting correlation between these four metrics that we have on, on, on this slide and the performance of a business, like, are you profitable? Are you gaining market share and so on? Isn't that interesting analysis? I think it is actually. So the elite organization that we see there, right in the middle, um, those are organizations that are doing very well with regards uh, to those um, four metrics. And the low organizations on the right are the ones not being successful or that are performing pretty badly against those four metrics. So the first two in green that we see um, are a little bit closer to the developers and has to do with deployment frequency, right? Do we have a new release into production every day? Is it every month or every six months? Um, the same thing for the lead time into production. Um, the highest performance could do both things in a matter of days if not hours, whereas the slowest performance will take months, right? So, and as we move down into the blue metrics, um, we start talking not about software itself, but about the stability of the software as it's running or MTTR, mean time for recovery, and also the change failure rate, the last one as we know that most of the, those failures come from changes, which is why any type of change is tracked and monitored thoroughly. And the reason why I'm showing you this analysis today is because we are explaining how GitOps is going to support all those metrics and more specifically, the developer ones. Um, next slide, please, Paul. Thank you very much. Now, so let's look at the developers and or DevOps teams, right? Um, that are responsible for creating the software and bring it into to production. And getting it to production is a bit confusing, I know. So one of the first things GitOps does uh, to support developers is to allow them to use familiar tooling. So instead of introducing yet another tool, one for continuous delivery, and another one for operations. Um, and to be fair, developers, you love Git. You have used it so effectively. You build all sort of automation collaboration around it. Why to make their ecosystem more complex? Why not to build on top of what they currently have and maybe evolve their tooling, right? And that is actually the first thing that GitOps does, hence the name. 
I guess. Now, the application team are responsible to operate their applications in production. And we want to give them self-service capabilities. But what do, what do we mean by self-service? It's not about providing them with an infrastructure and they are on their own, no. Uh, what we are talking about is self-service operations. Let them operate the applications themselves. GitOps will provide them with the interface to operations. And that sounds pretty interesting. And all done operated from Git, right? I think that's fantastic. I can hear many of you thinking and, and maybe saying, wait a minute, um, as an organization, I'm also responsible for maintaining security, compliance, resilience, and cost management. So all these, those actually prevented me from giving the developers um, that sales service operations um, that we talked about. So why not, you know, sales service GitOps? <laughs> now, the thing that we will show you today, it's tough that you can do as a developer. You don't need to go to your platform team. You can download the open source, you can start using it, and you're good to go. Later on, uh, when you start embracing this, adopting it maybe more broadly across your organization, that's where your platform team will help you do it in a more repeatable way. Good. Next one, please, Paul. Great. So one of the things that I want to point out is GitOps is not something that just applies to one category of things in our IT landscape. It doesn't just apply to infrastructure. It doesn't just apply to managing platforms, or it doesn't just apply to managing applications that are, are customer facing. It ultimately applies to all of those. However, we are aiming for this initial release of uh, with GitOps um, to developers of customer facing applications or the two top uh, metrics in, in green that we discussed earlier. With GitOps is focused on helping you build up the right automation uh, for, the love, for the software life cycle. And we'll emphasize that in just a, a moment. Now, with with GitOps, we are delivering to you an opinionated set of automation that we believe will help your software life cycle. But those conventions are not your only option. We favor convention over configuration, as you can see, which means that we have a turn that you have a turnkey experience. With GitOps really represents a turning point in your GitOps journey. We are delivering to you the foundation of a GitOps platform, the baseline for GitOps automation. But we are also delivering to you a platform that allows you to customize your GitOps automation. We're baking in some opinions. Uh, we expect those opinions to cover at least 80% of your use cases um, that you are going to need, right? But what about the other 20? Well, those will be covered with customizations because with GitOps strikes perfectly that balance between getting started uh, in the easiest way possible and allowing you to do custom configuration where you need to. And last but not least, definitely not least, it, it is open source. And that's, you know, you will see that today, you will start playing and getting your hands dirty. Next slide, please, Paul. Fantastic. So I'm sure you haven't seen this before, right? Um, so here is the software life cycle. This is an example that I'm sure most of you will resonate with. Starting from the left, um, I'm writing code, I'm going through unit tests, and at some point, my unit test goes green. And that is when CI will kick in and build a new container image. That container image will get deployed into a development environment. And after that, we'll do some more extensive testing in an environment that is closer to production. And once all this integration testing is passed, uh, we'll move that artifact to the production environment. Uh, 
So in order to deliver your software faster, um, shorten the time to market, keep things more resilient, companies need to get very, very good at this and will um, and will be in continuous optimization of this process. Last uh, slide, please, Paul. Fantastic. And this, this is actually the same, exactly the same process that we just saw on the previous slide. Just um, embedding GitOps, adding GitOps nuances to, to that process. So in step one on the left, um, we are writing the code, we're checking it into a Git repository, Git repository, right? That is the source Git repository. And then the CI is building again the image, right? The image, um, container image. Here's where GitOps picks up and handles the rest of the life cycle. And that was just step one. And now it says, all right, I'm going to store my configuration for the various environments in Git. And in this picture, there are two other Git repos that you can see with the icons, but those uh, could be maybe two different branches, to be honest. The Git icon at the bottom left is going to hold the application configuration, not the source code, okay? And together with the container, container image, is going to be deployed into the development environment. Maybe even auto-deploy into that dev environment. Now, you can also see step two and three, right? This third um, um, Git repo icon, bottom right, is going to hold the application configuration, but for production, with some secrets maybe for production, uh, and subsequently, there is a triggering of, you know, you know that process, the triggering of a pull request uh, that in step three will need to be approved. And then there will be some deployment automation for bringing that newly approved um, container, container image to, to production. So that deployment automation, of course, is going to tie in with the rest of the automation uh, that it takes all the way up to the runtime environment. The important thing that I want to emphasize here is that with GitOps, uh, with WIGWIGTOPS, we are enabling you to build up this flow that I just show. Um, and we are allowing you through a couple of commands and that Paul will show you to build up this flow. Those two commands only need to be run once to set up the flow. So here's the magic. After that, the developers and the DevOps engineers continue to operate things in step one, right? Pushing code to the repo. And then in step two, they are creating PRs. Step three, they are reviewing and approving PRs and all the rest happens for you. So to wrap things up, um, Git, with GitOps is about setting up that SDLC automation to optimize the, your software delivery. With GitOps is the easiest way to GitOps. Now, the outstanding question is, why do you want to do GitOps? With that, Paul, um, you all came here to see Paul in action. Paul is one of our brains behind this product. Um, so Paul, I hope you are ready. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, your time and attention. And, and now over to you, Paul. Great. Actually, before we jump ahead, we did have one question. Hopefully we have time for that. Um, <clears throat> the question was, what is the content of the Git repo in the lower left corner of the diagram? So that is, right. So that is uh, the, the application configuration. Um, so basically we are going to take the container image um, from Docker Hub or whatever it is, the repository. And with the um, configuration of this application, we are gonna deploy that into the dev environment. I don't know if uh, Paul yeah. or Thomas, somebody so else. So basically, this is the set of uh, YAMLs that tell Kubernetes yes. how to and then, this app. And then I apologize, the person followed up asking, what is the content of the configuration? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> so so, that, so yeah. I, I think this will become clearer in my demo. So okay. Uh, so, as we yeah. go through the GitOps, I will try and refer back to this slide and we will hopefully Excellent. tie it all together. But okay. it's basically the, the Kubernetes YAMLs in, in that repo. Great. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So um, unless anybody has any other burdening questions at this point, we will turn over to the actual hands-on part. And um, our goal, again, is for those of you who joined a little bit later, um, our goal is to make sure everybody gets through to the end. So please don't be shy if you get stuck. Um, we want to know everything. We want to know how you get stuck, you know, major ways, little ways, um, so that we can make improvements. So we really appreciate your time. So yes, Paul, you want to take it uh, away? And, uh, and just to make it fun, um, the team created a release candidate uh, last night. And, and so we're actually going to do this with the release candidate. So hopefully, fingers <laughs> crossed, it all works. Um, there were a lot of, I mean, we, we you know, this is a, a evolving, rapidly evolving project. And we had a bunch of bug fixes that we wanted to get to, to people trying it out. So um, we decided to do that. So I am going to start by uh, going to uh, the getting started guide. And I think there's there's a couple of ways you can get there. You can yeah. go to uh, docs.gitops weave.works or you can go to that link that was in Tamo's slide um, which I don't have in front of me but I, will... I think if you can find it it's weave.works works uh, slash product in fact if you just go to weaveworks we can find it from there I can grab it products weave GitOps core <clears throat> Excuse me. and you go to download now and it actually takes you to the GitHub page. And uh, from the GitHub page, you can see the getting started guide there. So it's all the same thing. So uh, and now the only thing I would say is that um, what we do want to make sure as you're doing this is we are on the main. So the, there is, as I said, the, the previous version 005, of the docs, but I, we want to be on main uh, because okay. that is going to give you the latest, greatest code. All right, um, so. let me just make sure because I pasted in the general link. Let You're me, saying we should have me it be paste followed in by. this one. Uh, I think that would be great. I think I got it wrong. Paste that one in. So. Okay. So hopefully everybody okay. click on that. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, and also we do have a question. It, maybe it might be for later. Uh, it's asking. I think that's I, that's a pretty detailed question. Let's can we hold okay. that one off? We'll pause. Okay. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to installation, and I have. For some reason, it's taken me to the 005. I want to go to the, um, yeah, sorry about this. Yeah. Let's go to the getting started guide. I think that's easier. I'm going to start from here. So if everyone's there and make sure we are on main. Sorry, there seems to be some, uh, there we go. So you should see, you want the getting started guide and you want this big orange thing at the top. Yeah. Um, so there are a few prerequisites for this. So there is a, a Windows build, but we have not tested it out for really. So it's really Mac and Linux so far. Uh, if you have got a Windows machine and you want to try it out, um, there we can help you through the chat and through the Slack. Um, and the other thing is that at the moment we only support GitHub. We are working on GitLab support and other Git providers, but this is really focused on GitHub today. So to get this working, you will need a GitHub account, a GitHub token. Uh, you will need Git kubectl installed, uh, and you will need some kind of uh, development Kubernetes cluster. And for this, I'm going to use uh, Kind 
and, and Kai needs Docker installed and running. Okay, um, why don't we pause there on the prerequisites? I put some questions in chat. I'm just curious um, who here is using Windows today? We said we think we can still make it through it, but it'd just be good to know who'll we'll be doing the workshop using a Windows machine. And then the <clears throat> second question, yes, was uh, so for today's, right, it's GitHub only. Um, it is. GitHub. They would have to create a GitHub account. Um, we are aware that um, people have asked, well, aside from asking, we definitely will be providing GitLab support, but not in this current version. That's right. Okay, we have at least one person using Windows. Um, does exciting. anybody who needs time to set up a basic GitHub account? And then the last one I know when we did this two weeks ago, one person didn't have Docker set up to use Kind. Does anybody here need that as well? And please do let us know. That's why we're doing a full two-hour workshop. So it may take a little bit longer, but we're happy to um, get people through it. So one person is new to Kind, um, but do you have, so, go ahead. So Paul. let me just explain what Kind is for those of you who don't know. Let me just go to the, um, it should work fine with Minikube um, and it should uh, work fine with other Kubernetes distros. I've tested it on a couple, but um, this this uh, getting started guide is based on kind. If you um, uh, if you don't have if you want to try it with Minikube, go for it. Uh, if you um, if you don't know what kind is, let me just explain what that is. Uh, Kubernetes kind is basically Kubernetes in Docker. It's a bit like Minikube. It's a very simple, uh, very simple way of running a Kubernetes cluster on your local machine. So if you if you Google kind Kubernetes, you get to this page, and it shows you how to install it. Um, and if you have Go, it's super easy. If you have Linux, it's pretty easy. If you have Brew. You can do that. So there's a whole bunch of ways you can get kind, um, and and it's pretty simple and straightforward. You do need, as as Tamo said, you do need to have Docker running to get kind running. So I will leave that there. Um, that was quick. Garth has already installed and get his cluster created. So that's really cool. Thank you. Um, we will. Uh, I will. I will explain how we GitOps and Flux and various things fit together and so forth in a in a minute. But I think for for the moment, let's just keep going with the getting started guide. So uh, the next thing you do need is you need to have a GitHub token with repository access. And let me just open this link. Um, so uh, basically you you can follow this guide it's linked from and i'll just show you what it looks like if i just go to github um, and i go to my uh, settings and then i go to developer settings and you go to personal access tokens and you uh, generate a new token and you need to give it repo access because it's going to create a repositories uh, uh, on your behalf and, and access repositories and, and do things uh, and i gave mine the token name we go and you click generate token oh that's already been taken i'll give it we go to generate token and I am going to delete that now because anyone seeing that would <laughs> access to my GitHub. I don't want you uh, to do that. So I'm going to instantly delete that one um, and use the one I previously created. Uh, but hopefully people got the idea of that process there. Uh, we have a question. So, go what for other, 
what other than the repo should the token be granted access to? Sorry. It only it doesn't need any other access, just re, just repo access. That's the only one it needs access to. Okay. And you need to export that in your uh, command line, uh, like put it in your bash profile or basically do an export and put it into your environment as GitHub token. I also wanted to pause again, just in case um, yes. anybody doesn't use GitHub and they need to create a quick a free account. Um, is anybody going through that step and just need a little time to create that? Or maybe also you aren't that familiar with GitHub. So need to go through this part. Getting good questions. That's good. Um, Anyone else? Don't be shy. We want to make sure everybody follows along. I've noticed no one has left, so that's a good sign. But also, if anybody is stuck, we will definitely wait for you. Okay, got one all good. Anybody not all good? Also, the person who created the kind cluster. How's that going? Oh, and by the way, I was curious. I know you verbally answered about Minikube, but you're saying Minikube should work? For anybody using Minikube? Fingers crossed. I would <laughs> okay. love to try it out on Minikube. <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, so we have it. And, and you know, if you have a EKS cluster or a DigitalOcean cluster or uh, Azure cluster, you know, we I've tried this on a couple of different. I haven't tried it on Minikube, but I have tried it on a few uh, cloud clusters, and it works great. But you know, if you have a, a another cluster, the one thing I do have to say. Um, it does not work on a cluster that already has Flux installed. Oh yes, forgot to say that. At so the that is really important to say that, and and so because this is you know, this is kind of doing the same thing that that Flux does, and so we we definitely want to add support to kind of, you know, say hey we can you know take on board Flux and and do cool stuff with it. But at the moment, we haven't got that. So we actually have a kind of test uh, to check if Flux is installed. And if Flux is installed, it says, hey, sorry, we're not going to try and do this, just so you don't kind of end up with two agents doing the same thing yes. in the same cluster, which would be a big mess. Cool. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, next step is to install the CLI. And this should work on most systems this thing so i'm just going to hit copy in the in the right hand corner there and go over to a to a terminal window and hit paste um however if it doesn't work like if you have a linux arm system it may that new name minus m may not exactly match and it may not work in which case we can definitely help you get it Going. And this is where the Windows, if you're trying, if you're going along on Windows, that's not going to work. I just need to type my password in for sudo. And there we go. And it should come up with a current version and uh, git commit and which branch and the flux version. And uh, Mark on our team added a good note in the chat that you'll need your cluster running at least on Kubernetes 1.16. And kubectl 1.18. Um, oh, that's cool. We should put that in the docs. That's really useful. <laughs> um, so someone's saying they're having issue on the Mac, giving a ZSH error. Okay. Thank you for sharing. The link that. I, I curled. Let me go back to that. Is this page? So I was on the getting started guide. And I clicked on the CLI installation page, and it took me to this installing the CLI, and still on the main tab up here. And this whole curl link is there. Um, it's really not doing anything very clever. So if you do have a problem on your shell, um, and I uh, maybe maybe we can someone can jump in on a 
and help in, in, in the um, Slack channel and help. But I basically just went to this bit, installing the CLI, hit copy, and that's what I pasted over here. If you, uh, if that doesn't work, uh, let me show you another option. So another option is to go to the uh, we've GitOps, sorry. go to the we've GitOps page, click on releases, and go find the right. So this is the uh, 0, 010 0 RC1 release and go find the right uh, in binary for your environment. So, for example, I'm on Darwin x86 and um, in fact, you are not going to have, you are going to have trouble on Windows because there is not a Windows build here. Uh, unless you have WSL installed, in which case you can do it. Um, and I'm going to copy that link address. And I'm going to go uh, curl minus L, paste that link address and go uh, minus little O, sorry, minus little O, we go. And then the, the rest of the commands should all work from there. So then, you know, the Chemod plus X, uh, all of those commands. So I might, oh dear. Let me just do that again. I, So those three commands, chmod plus x, we go, then move it to use a local bin, and then we go version. There we go. Sorry, there's a question. No, we go completion. Uh, I don't think we have we go completion yet. It's in our it's in our backlog. It's a great question. Then, okay, uh, so I'm just going to, I know there's a few people who um, may be catching up, but for those of you who are ready and you have kind installed, I would, oh, sorry, I would do this next, sorry, my machine is misbehaving. I would do this step next, kind create cluster, because it takes a minute. So you can, if you're ready to do that, that's a great time to do it. Do you mind uh, zooming in your text just one? I don't mind. Thanks. Um, okay. Yeah, and then it looks like in the chat, Mark is helping people if anybody is stuck with curl failing. The alternate option. Thanks for that. Anybody else stuck on the curl or even earlier? Don't be shy. Good to see some people doing well, but we want to make sure. Um, and then, yeah, Kaja, are you still getting an error? I hope you're pr pronouncing your name correctly. So let me just go back to the docs to show people where we've got to. So oh, all good, excellent. I did this step installing the CLI, uh, which was uh, just here in the getting started guide, and then I have done this kind of create cluster. Um, so now we have the CLI on our local machine, and we have a cluster running. So might be worth while we're waiting just for me to explain actually what is it we're going to do here. Yeah. 
kind of give the big picture. Uh, I know Jose kind of gave that big picture, but try and tie it to here. So I have a particular application that I want to deploy into this cluster. Now, of course, I could kubectl apply that, and that would do it once. But what I really want to do is set up a continuous delivery environment where when I make changes to the to the uh, repository, they get reflected automatically in the cluster. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a, mm. uh, a particular class, a particular application, and instead of just kubectl applying it into this cluster, we're going to GitOps apply it into the cluster. And that is going to give us then this continuous delivery. And as, as I said, we can then go and make changes through uh, GitHub, through pull requests, and use those pull requests to track uh, updates to this to this cluster. So, do, are we in? Do we have a feeling we're in a good shape here for where people are at? So let me just go and uh, show you this cluster is running. Cluster info. And there's my cluster running. So while this is not in the guide, but this is kind of just going to show you what's happening. It's sort of in the guide, but without the watch command. I'm going to just do a Let us see actually what happens while we do this. So I'm going to do a watch on that. There's nothing happening in my Wego system namespace. And the next step is to do this Wego GitOps install. And what this is going to do is install the core uh, Wego runtime into the cluster. And basically starts installing those and then it sits and waits. Uh, uh, for those containers to come up in the cluster and when they're all up, it will finish. And a great question is, hey, these look just like Flux controllers. Yes, they are just Flux controllers. So we've GitOps is really closely tied to Flux. It's uh, built on top of Flux. My kind of analogy is this is like a distribution of Flux that's that's got some uh, some predefined opinions baked into it uh, that we are trying to make super easy to use and it's also a supported distribution of flux so uh, if you have i mean you know obviously the flux team are awesome at dealing with problems but if you want commercial support this is a this is a way that you can get it through a standard product so you can see it's nearly all running bingo they're all running and the install's finished so now I have a set of uh, GitOps controllers, a GitOps runtime, as we call it, running in my cluster. And um, we're in good shape. So let's just wait a second and see how everyone's doing, who's, who's successfully got there. And by the way, those of you who are kind of wondering about how this relates to Flux, if you type we go Flux, you'll see that you can actually jump in and uh, control the underlying Flux runtime with just like you would with the Flux CLI. So this basically wraps the Flux CLI and, and lets you do things like suspend and resume and uh, display formatted logs and export resources and so forth. So all the cool capabilities of Flux are available. So, so I let's recap. We have a cluster. We have uh, we've GitOps installed on the cluster, and we have the CLI ready. Now I need to find a workload to deploy in it, and. We're going to use a, a, a great uh, application called PodInfo, and there is a 
there is the 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 one that Stefan wrote, but uh, what we are going to have is just a simple repo that only has just the pod info uh, YAMLs in it. So if I go to this uh, repo, so if you follow down to step four and click on that link, you'll see this uh, repo just has uh, a set of YAMLs, a namespace YAML, uh, a deployment YAML for the back end, and a deployment YAML and service YAML for the front end. So these are just really simple, and I'm going to go and fork that repository into my uh, into my personal thing, uh, my personal uh, organization on GitHub, and then I'm going to go and clone this. So I'm going to use, and really important, we need the SSH clone here because of the way uh, we've get up to users keys. Uh, so I'm going to clone the SSH one and I'm going to go to somewhere to put it into my system and I'm going to do a git clone on that, on my fork, just to be really clear. And then I'm going to switch into that directory. And I can see exactly that stuff. There's the, there are those YAMLs. And, and just to circle back to that question we had at the beginning, this is the repository at the bottom left-hand corner, right? This is the repository that has my uh, application config YAMLs in it. Uh, pod info is the, the Stefan's pod info is the mono repo that has YAMLs and code and builds the images and everything. So that that's my this you might call pod in, the Stefan Prodan's pod info, the, the, the application code repository, uh, and this is just the deployment uh, YAMLs. Now, the way we have GitOps and, and, and the underlying Flux system works, you can have a mono repo or you can have separate repos. Okay. Um, I, I will explain how that would work in a minute. Great. And as we're um, pausing, just some people have given some thoughts. They think things are working fine, but maybe it's taking time, some time to spin up the cluster. Just thought I'd bring it up in case anybody else has gone through this. And is there something on our end that could take time? Or hopefully, hopefully it's just taking time. Hopefully it's not just spinning. Um, and and also, really interesting yeah. to yeah. know is it taking time to spin up the cluster or is it taking time to spin up uh, our stuff inside the cluster because those mm -hmm. yeah. those are kind of both of those can take time and I'm you know normally it's just kind of like one to two minutes uh, on that oh, I'm sorry to hear you gave up on Minikube I will I will definitely have a go with it um, tomorrow and see how I get on and, and maybe we can add that to the getting started guide as well because I do know that's a popular development environment. But uh, thanks for installing kind and still yeah. sticking with it so that's good. Um, and also yeah thanks to Minja for sharing. I, I love getting the background info too. So you're installing on EC2 um, instance an EC2 instance that's Ubuntu based and it's working perfectly. So oh. thank you for sharing that. Um, and so, so for the Person taking a while, it says kind clusters created proceeding with installing GitOps through WeGo. So I don't know. I don't know if it's us. Okay. So Thanks let's just sharing. recap what we've done. We installed the CLI. Uh, we did a WeGo GitOps install to install our runtime into the cluster. Okay. And now I've forked this. Uh, repository and cloned it so I have our local clone and now what I'm going to do is add this application in this directory which is hinted at by this dot here um, into the uh, current we get ops cluster and let's see what happens and so the first thing it does is it kind of figures out which uh, repository I'm using. It checks that we go is it, we GitOps is installed in the cluster. 
And then the next thing is done here is it's generated a deploy key for this repository and uploaded that deploy key. And so, for instance, my email will very soon be getting a little ping from GitHub saying, hey, a new deploy key was uh, installed into your uh, pod info deploy repository. Now, the reason for this is that a deploy key is a key that is only valid for that repository. And effectively, the GitOps runtime needs access to that repository. And we do not want uh, that access to be access to your whole GitHub account. So what we've done is we've used the GitHub API to, to uh, upload a key just for that, to give you, to give, uh, the, the GitOps runtime access to that one repository. And then it's built uh, some manifests and deployed those manifests and then committed them, pushed them to the repository. Mm. And if I come up to this other pane, I'm sorry, I'm, it's a, a typical, we'll always have the Zoom thing right in the way, so I can't see what I'm doing. Um, and if I do a kube couple get pods, in the test namespace, you can see that I have uh, two pods running. And if I just come here and I go cat namespace.yaml, that's because this uh, app was designed to deploy into the test namespace. And that's what it's done. So it's basically deployed uh, those two, uh, those the front end uh, pod and the back end pod into my test namespace and now they're running in my cluster. So if we go back to the, um, if we go back to the guide, we are pretty much on step eight. Hopefully everyone's keeping up and it's all going well. And I mean, I can coo cuttle and see that the things are there. But I can also use an app status command in uh, Wego, and it will actually tell me the last successful deployment time was 1723.37 GMT, mm. and it deployed this Git repository at this particular SHA from GitHub. And the particular type of thing it deployed was a customization. Now, the way Flux works and the way we GitOps works is that if it's just a core YAML, it treats that as a customization. For those of you who don't know, Customize is an awesome project that allows you to uh, modify uh, Kubernetes deployment YAMLs uh, as you deploy them to, to tweak different aspects. So at the moment, this is a really simple example. I'm just deploying into one cluster. But if I was deploying into a dev and a prod cluster, there would be aspects of those YAMLs I would like to change and customization lets me do that. We have a question. Um, yeah. why, why is the GitHub token needed for this? Is, SSH, is an SSH key not enough? So uh, there are ways of uh, using this just with the SSH key if you pass the SSH key. But the way the GitHub, the way this is working is the uh, GitHub token is letting us um, basically do that, uh, is, is letting us create that deploy key. And actually, this behavior, if I go to the docs and um, and it says it, it it says something somewhere in here, I can't see. Uh, yes, it says note that we go has checked in this YAML into your forked repository. This will change in a future re release to create a PR against your repository instead, and that's where it's going to be really handy to have that GitHub token. So in our mindset, uh, you certainly, there are cases where you would like to automatically merge this, but um, 
you know, in reality, the whole GitOps idea is that you track the changes to your cluster, the changes to your system through pull requests and your Git processes. And so uh, we are using the, the GitHub API to do that PR against your repository and, and basically to raise that PR and create the deploy key and do all sorts of things. And Minja says the issue I have with GitHub token is it's created by the developer. If the creator leaves the company, it gets complicated. So it, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, I, uh, I think you can create like organizational tokens or, or move tokens to organizations. So I think there are ways of dealing with that. Um, and I see there's also a question from uh, yeah, Wolfgang. Actually, well, actually, if we could go up first. So I think it's kind of related oh, okay. to you because Kaja sure. was saying, I'm getting the error with WeGo add because, um, oh, the issue was because of the token generated. Oh, sorry. So now it is working. Okay, good. Sorry. That was a response because, yeah, Mark was asking whether Kaja had cloned the repo via SSH or HTTPS. Okay. And then Kaja said, Yes. that uh, is because of the token. So now it's working. Okay, great. Um, and now Wolfgang, yes, shared the error. Yes. Um, and we'll, we and, and as I, I, did, I did try and cover this earlier, but um, yes, at this point in time, we do not in support supporting with GitOps side into the same cluster as Flux is already installed. Yeah, so apologies. Yeah, we shared um, to go through this workshop, you'd have to have one without flux yet. Uh, a fresh cluster, yeah. Yes. So, which is that, good that you added that error because before that, people did install <laughs> and then that yes. happened. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the next step is to see what it's done, but actually, let's just, uh, I'm just going to actually check that it's working. <laughs> And so um, I'm going to, there's no ingress here. So I'm going to go to step 11 and I'm going to copy the port forward. And what this will do is set up a little port forward so I can actually see this app is running. And I'm going to go to uh, localhost uh, 9898, which is where it's forwarding to. And yay, we have pod info running. So just to prove it did deploy and it is running. Um, which is nice. How are we doing for questions? Yeah, I'm just double checking with Wolfgang. So are you creating a new cluster with Kind? Is that what you're doing? Just trying to understand what you wrote in the chat. Um, and while I'm waiting for Wolfgang, uh, Ram is asking, can we use Bitbucket? Not yet. That's along with GitLab, that's our target to add. Um, but we are not there yet. Okay. And then, okay, great. So Wolfgang is using kind. Mark was asking about uh, the version of Weave GitOps. I think that's getting clarified. So let's take a moment as well. Like, um, yeah. is anybody super, super stuck? Because <laughs> again, it's been great to see people still sticking around, but also want to make sure you're successful. We're doing okay for time. And uh, Paul, sorry if I've missed, but you've kind of completed the installation and demo. Is that correct? Or were there more? There's well, I haven't quite because okay. the fact is I've got it running, but that is not, you know, I could have done that with kubectl. The really interesting thing now is to uh, create a PR and change my repository and see that update in my cluster. So I, I think that is something that, that we should do. Um, so I will come back. There's a couple of steps I didn't. Do, but I, let's go and move forward and move to step 12. 
and uh, you can do this in your CLI or you can do this in your um, in, in your browser right this is this is just github so I'm actually going to show everyone in the browser just today so I'm going to go to that fork I have and uh, what did I say in the things I'm going to go to the front end deployment so front end deployment yaml and I'm going to click edit and down here is the color of the UI and I'm going to change that to 8888 and I am going to uh, create a new branch and start a pull request and I'm going to just say update deployment ammo and change the color by the way Paul this breaks my heart because Stefan changed it because you're supposed to have a surprise and delight with the cuttlefish, but he just made it a change in color. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I know Stefan's way too busy for me to go and say, what about my other cuttlefish? That uh, <laughs> I Yes. It's uh, supposed if you to tell be... me, how do I get a surprise and delight with the cuttlefish? It's supposed to be a different animated cuttlefish, but so it goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to change the color today. We we can fix that. It's literally on my list in 2022 that. when all is done. I'll go, hey, Stefan. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go create pull request. And so now I've got my pull request and there's no conflicts with the base branch. I don't unfortunately have any cool GitHub actions to validate this, but you can imagine that would be there. And uh, I am going to just, uh, before I do this, I'm going to just do a watch on that code cuttle up uh, get pods. Minus name and test. And I'm actually going to do a watch on that. There we go. App status pod info deploy so we can see what's happening here. And now I'm going to merge the pull request and merge. And now let's go see what's happening with our um, with the actual application. While we're waiting, Wolfgang found a potential fix. Said found a way to deal with the flux issue. We do. Oh, cool. We go flux uninstall, then we go install. Okay. Cool. I, I, I haven't been following close enough, Wolfgang. But what I just want to show you quickly before it vanishes is that it actually added a new front end and now it's terminating the, the old front end. Uh, and this is, you know, if you know Flux, this is no magic, but this is kind of cool. You know, it's not, it's not changed the back end. The back end hasn't changed. It's only updated the front end. And if we go back and you can see there's a new updated deployment time. And if I start up my kubectl port forward again and go to look at the front end, hey, the color changed. It's not so pretty as it was before. It's just boring <laughs> and gray. Um, and then the question, there's a question saying, what would be an alternate for watch on a Mac? Okay. So watch, you don't need the watch. Watch just keeps doing the same thing so you can see what's happening. If you want, if you have brew, you can just go brew install watch and it'll yes. add it. Uh, but the alternate would just be literally just to do, uh, just to keep doing that code cuttle a couple of times and watch it yourself. That's all it's doing is once every two seconds it's doing that. So uh, I, I done the whole thing. There is one more little bit I would like to show people, but I will give it a minute to see how people are getting on and where we got to before I do that. So actually, I was curious when you said main, like what version are you on? Oh, okay, Jerry just answered. Paul's using 0.1.0.rc1. 
So as soon as we cut the 010, it's no longer a release candidate. We will cut the docs to match it. Uh, but at the moment, the docs are um, the the docs are on just made means the, like the latest. Yeah, at this point in time. And I guess what happened, Wolfgang, was that you you were on the zero five install rather than the main install. And I do realize you're, you know, this is all brand new stuff. As soon as we get um. To get the release cut, we will have a we will sort that out. And you know, I, I know you. I know one's found like really terrible problems, but even these little issues that people are running up against, uh, we are taking note of. And this is super helpful for our kind of user experience, testing out the getting started guide, making sure that it's really bulletproof, and that people. Uh, are tracking. So, and Minja asks, I wonder how sure are we with Kubernetes v116? Not sure what you mean. Like, are we, do we feel it's stable or uh, since we are using the customization kubectl version is on 121? Uh, I guess the question is, are we really sure this will work yeah. um, on 116? And it's a great question. Uh, I don't think 116 is in our test harness at the moment. So uh, Mark, maybe Mark uh, in nice can, can answer that. Also wanted to see if, if we had time for that tag question at the very beginning uh, why is the customization controller implementation using cute cuddle it's just a bookmarked broader question that is i guess related um to the to the same question mm -hmm. and actually i you you below my you are deeper than my level of knowledge so I can't answer that maybe uh, Kingdon or Marky Mice on the court on the chat might be able to they are on the chat so Kingdon says V one sixteen is new enough to work with Flux but there could be some incompatible differences in one twenty two which is due out in a few months. One sixteen is a minimum version for Flux. Okay, cool. So just one more thing that I wanted to show, and that is if I go back, I'm going to delete that branch. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to go back to this uh, code base. And you'll see that one of the things that we did was to add this uh, we go dot we go directory to the uh, app, to the to the repository with my manifest in it now it does not have to go there you can specify which repository you want to store this in so for example if you didn't want to fork this repo you just wanted to use a standard application repo from from GitHub, then there's a way of saying, hey, actually, I want this uh, config to go somewhere else. And it's even possible to just have it on disk, though that, that doesn't uh, scale very well and doesn't, but it, it's kind of easy for a starting point. Oh. And let me just show you what this WeGo uh, app config looks like. The first thing is there's an application YAML. Um, which basically says, here's the application, its name is podinfo deploy, and here's the uh, URL and the path that we are, and if there was a branch, that which branch we're, uh, we're going to deploy from. So this is basically configuring the application, so which, uh, which particular repository, which path and which branch we want to grab the config from. And then 
if I go back to dot rego, you can see that it's basically got a target. This is saying when I deploy this application into this cluster kind kind, what do I do? And there is a runtime YAML here, but this is just the uh, this is basically where it's saying uh, the source controller configuration and the customized controller configuration for how to get this uh, how to get this code into the cluster and then how to deploy it. But those of you who know Flux, this is where we can add all sorts of other things into that GitOps uh, runtime, that GitOps workflow, and that would include um, you know that image automation that Jose talked about and so forth. So this is one of the things is that this is done us. I, I think this goes back to what Jose said at the beginning. We have the basic, uh, very opinionated. You know, we only did two really simple commands to get this configured. Super easy, made life really easy. But there is all the power of Flux under the covers, and you can go and set up image automation. You can set up secrets management. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So that was the last thing I wanted to show. Excellent. And we've got a bunch of questions. Um, so the first one is, this is great. It's great to have a local deploy, one environment. Are there any examples of how to store different environment details in Git and what those details will be? For example, in the first diagram shown earlier. So uh, we are um, we are rapidly working on getting the docs up to speed. Uh, we don't have that documented, but it does work. Uh, so um, we will the docs will be uh, to show you those kind of scenarios will be coming really soon, uh, and uh, just ask you to bear with. Um, and then we have someone who um, was kind of struggling with we go get ups installed back in step two. So hopefully Mark and team are helping out with that. The error was. I think, I think maybe they don't. It says no API key specified. That may be uh, no GitHub token. Okay. In the so. environment accessible, I'm guessing. Um, and then Minja asks, does Flux support dry run like kubectl? So instead of correcting drift, more of detecting drift. So uh, let me just show you, uh, I believe that we do have a dry run and you can see what it, the, the manifests are gonna be. So yes, we do have a dry run uh, capability on the app ad. Uh, and I believe on the install as well. So yes, we do have a, a dry run. Okay, excellent. And uh, some people are just fixing their versions and yet they're following along, so it's good. Amazing is the response. Oh, thank you. That's made my day. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's make sure we've got one person who's dealing with that no API key specified issue, another person reinstalling. Um, and before people, if people have finished and they are taking off, we should make sure that we share that we have a Slack channel. We're following along later. I need to find my slide, I, think I might've lost it. Do you need me to stop sharing? Um, I was just gonna. Um, oh, you just paste it in there. Brilliant. I was just gonna paste it in. Yeah. In fact, Stacy's beaten when you took it. Good. I'm glad she did because that was gonna be my next step. <laughs> I always ask Stacy for help when I fail. Uh, great. Yeah. So, if everybody, if anybody's already on our, we've community Slack, there's a channel called weave-gitups. Um, but if you need to invite yourself to um, our Slack, actually, Stacy, would you mind adding that as well? If people need to invite themselves to our Slack, we'll have that as well. Um, okay, so Mark has so, helped with the GitHub token issue. And then now the question is about, oh yes. When yeah. can we see GitLab integration? Awesome. 
Um, that's a great question. Uh, I should I should kind of put one of my you know forward looking statements you know all the rest of it. I I'm not promising, but um, hopefully within the next uh, month or so, we'll definitely see get get lab integration. It's uh, something we're working on actively at the moment. Um, part of it is we actually have all we have loads of it's it's not really that we don't have the code it's just we have not tested and and, and got it all up to speed so far so and uh, while we're waiting for people to catch up you know if you have uh, this is an open source project there's a it's all in let me just go back to that link um, if you go to the documentation, click on the GitHub link in the corner, it takes you to the we've GitOps uh, page. And you know, if you want to, there's a lot of issues in here, but if you want to uh, create an issue, uh, we would love to get that feedback, uh, things that we can improve, things that matter to you. Uh, there may be an issue in there, in which case you can you know, add a comment saying, hey, I'd love this too. Um, but yeah, that that kind of feedback is really one of the reasons why uh, why we run these sessions is not just to find what works, but also to find what doesn't work, what could be improved, uh, how we can make this a better project. So yeah, uh, and along with that, I do appreciate the people who weren't shy to say, "Hey, I got stuck back on step two. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah like definitely want people to be successful is no problem at all um and so while we're waiting for we know that people are going through some of the steps has anybody fully fully completed and have some feedback um we definitely also appreciated people from the last couple of weeks who did complete all the steps and either said hey, this is great, or hey, here's my seven pieces of feedback to make this better, right? We appreciate all of the above. So I'd love to hear from you if you have been following along and you have been successful and whether this is something that you feel would be very desirable in your teams, let us know, or not desirable at all and why. Excellent, got one person who said it worked. Um, so while we're waiting, is there anything else on the docs? So we highlighted the issues for people to put their questions in. Um, we have the getting started. Are there other areas, um, Paul, that you'll be working on? Okay, oh, thanks for letting us know, worked fine, excellent. Um, another area, actually, Paul, if we could look at the docs again. Worked perfect on Ubuntu on EC2, excellent. Um, I was curious, so you have the architecture area and- There is, there's a whole bunch of docs that are coming soon. So, are coming soon, okay. Um, so, you know, uh, apologize for the, you know, it's always a challenge getting the docs done when we're iterating quite fast. Um, but uh, we are, this is a big area of focus to get a, a core set of docs out there. Um, and um, we actually just uh, got a, like, a little team together. And we, as you'll see, if you, if you do want to go through the issues, you'll find some issues in there with some of our ideas of how we're going to do it. So we're, we're tracking that and, and working mm -hmm. on this right now. So I was also wondering, um, so we fairly recently actually created a core concepts section on the flux docs. And um, for me, that's been kind of one of my answers when people are saying, well, what's the difference between the two? And I'd say in some ways um, we felt even as we were writing core concepts, we felt, you know, this is a, a fairly, in some cases could be a fairly specific type of user. The core concepts can be fairly advanced. Um, and so we've GitOps is meant to kind of address people who may not have the teams or the resources to, to go through something like that. That said, would it be helpful to have some core concepts that are specific to we've GitOps? Um, Absolutely. Anybody, anybody who's just gone through these steps have feedback in that area? Uh, that'd be another area to either shout out or um, submit in our issues later. 
be great. Cool. Well, it's great to see, at least on the positive side, people who've completed the workshop and feel it was a positive experience. Thanks for the feedback on saying this is a well-constructed lab. <laughs> Very good. Good, Paul. Thank you. And otherwise, yeah, we're happy to um, hang out for those of you who I know some have restarted. We totally appreciate that. And that's not a problem at all. And otherwise, any last questions for those of you who are done? I'm actually wondering if, um, not to put Paul, put you on the spot, but it's sometimes nice to kind of close out with a reminder of the beginning. Is there anything from Jose's slides that might be worth repeating to like remember the vision and the end goal of why people would go through all these steps? Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. And I, did, to be honest, we didn't do everything that was in Jose's thing. That's a longer demo, uh, which we are going to document. It works fine, but it's it's not all. Uh, it's not all in the, that getting started guide. We just wanted to kind of get to that point of the sort of success. But the what we showed here was the the. I, I think the the really key point Jose said was, you know, there are these two commands to set up your environment. Right. We did. If I go back to the docs uh, and highlight them. Uh, the really two, I mean, obviously there were commands about clusters and forking and tokens and, and things that are to do with the environment. But this first command, read GitOps install. Uh, and then this second command, uh, we go app add. And that configured this environment. And then what I did was just to go and create a pull request against my config my application uh, or my configuration in this case and merge that pull request and you can see the, the history of this um, you know you can see those pull requests that have happened and the commits that have happened to this fork and every commit has had a has a corresponding change in my cluster so now as Jose said instead of using uh, using all sorts of commands that are uh, you know ad hoc imperative commands to configure the cluster you just make changes in the declaration in git and, and those get automatically reconciled into the cluster and you know i was i've been on a you know i've been in the software business for a very long time and one of the things uh, i've been <laughs> dealt with a lot is uh, sysadmin type things and, and situations where you're trying to resolve an incident and so forth. And, you know, this is just so helpful because you just see, you know, I can go and see exactly what was changed on the cluster uh, and I can roll it back if I need to. And, you know, compared to, you know, trying to keep a, a log of all the things that you did to the cluster, this just does it for you. And, and so this, to me, one of the really key aspects of, of that I love GitOps about is it, it kind of links the organization and, and the people and the processes with the technology. You know, we have some really good processes around Git and around version control and merging and pull requests and reviews. Uh, and you can build those into your uh, continuous deployment lifecycle. I think it's amazing. Cool. And we have a question. Um, so maybe slightly earlier, what you're talking about. Would I get a warning for a slick? Sorry. Would I get a warning for a cyclic dependency for my customization resources? Uh, I am going to just admit I do not know. Uh, I'm sorry, Ninja. I this is beyond my maybe kingdom. Uh, might know this. Um, Kington has said, no, I don't think there's any cyclic dependency check. You should definitely avoid them. <laughs> That's a great, 
that's a great hint. Um, it's a it's a good question. I mean, if if that if you think that's a really a, an issue, we can definitely add a check in. Um, uh, it's not one that's come up before that I to, to me, but maybe maybe people in the Flux team have seen that before. That's great. So I'm gonna send some quick notes. See how people are doing. I really appreciate that people are following along. And actually, just checking through here. Um, It's good to see that people are still here. I think they're working on oh, done with everything. My end. Excellent. Great. So good to see the troubleshooting worked. And it was good that we added the extra time on 90 minutes or more if needed. So it seems like it's good. I know we don't have a PM with us today, but uh, Paul, do you know on your end, like even in the next two weeks, what the uh, what, what key focus areas the engineering team is working on for Weave GitOps? So uh, the the core focus is to obviously get out this next little release, uh, fix any little bugs. I think I think we've pretty close to that. Um, that's going to happen in the next day or so. And then I know that there is, so there's one thing that, uh, that we're not doing at the moment, that we're not, um, we're not GitOpsing ourselves, right? So in other words, deploying the, um, the, the, the runtime that got deployed is not being GitOps, and that doesn't really matter for some simple development scenarios. But when I get into a multi-cluster environment, I want to be able to recreate that cluster with everything, including the GitOps runtime. So that's one aspect. And, and the other aspect is that um, those of you who follow Flux will know that there's a uh, kind of first iteration of a Flux UI out in in Flux, um, and we are kind of building on that work and, and creating a first iteration of a Weave GitOps UI. And uh, I think one of the things that's kind of, you know, a minor difference, but kind of cool is that uh, the Flux is not really, the Flux UI is not really about writing back to, to GitHub. Um, and so what one of our aims is with the Weave GitOps UI is to just kind of make it a little bit more uh, capable of actually updating your Git repos if when you want to. So, you know, the, the the kind of thing that you would want to do maybe is to say, hey, I want to uh, revert a change or or put a pause on reconciliation, do some cool things like that. And I'm uh, I'm kind of not exactly sure what's in those that first iteration. So I may be talking rubbish here. But 
but certainly the aim is to have a, a, a read GitOps UI based on some of the work we did in the Flux UI. Um, and right. uh, I know Mark and Jerry on the call as well. They may have some other things that are in the focal in the in the um, in the sprint plan. Were you hailing them to join in or not? I'm just mentioning it. If they have anything else that is on the thing, they could they could jump in and say. Um, if not, I was going to um, start suggesting that we move this over to the Slack channel. Um, let me just give me a moment. I don't know why I can't find my. Oh, here it is. Cool. I will go ahead and share. Take over. Okay. Mm, I was shit. just. Oh. oh, sorry. Were you going to share something? <laughs> no, I just. Uh, I was just like. I don't know if anyone saw that. Uh, before before it handed over, I was just doing a revert on that change I made to the repository because okay. that was you. You asked me, you know, what are those things that um, that uh, Jose said at the very beginning, and one of those things he said was the mean time to recovery, right? And I just wanted to, you know, I was sort of still processing, and I suddenly thought, yeah, that's one thing we can just really show instantly. The MTTR, right? Suppose I made that change to my pod info. Uh, I didn't like it. It was wrong. It increased CPU usage. It broke something. All I have to do is go and revert that PR and uh, merge the it, GitHub creates me a new PR, and merge it, and bingo, within uh, within less than a minute, I'm back to where I used to be and I'm recovered. Cool. Thanks. So come in. Um. So thanks everybody. Um, here are the links that we shared. So the main Weave GitOps page is here. You'll get an email with all these links, but just letting you know. Uh, the getting started guide, um, actually, that is not the one that we followed today. So we'll make sure we send you the one that's main. Uh, and then I think the most important thing for anybody who's still following along will be actively on the Slack channel um, where we have slash Weave GitOps. So I'll follow up with you right away so you can join us there. And um, yeah, if anybody's still trying to get through the final bits, we're, we're always there to help out. And I really appreciate your time uh, and the team's time for going through these steps. Um, and sorry, just checking quick questions. So some was uh, someone still going through it. So yeah, we'll see you in the Slack channel. And uh, pretty appreciate your help. So thanks again to Jose for kicking us off. And uh, Stacy, of course, for our community manager and keeping this going. And Paul, thanks for going through all the steps and all the um, engineers in Kingdon on our side, helping people through the troubleshooting. And especially thank you for you for sticking through all this and going through the steps and all of your feedback. That was really great. Yeah. And uh, let me also add my thanks to Tamo for organizing this session and being an awesome MC and stopping me from running ahead and making sure everyone was caught up. So brilliant job. Thanks everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, thanks everybody. I'll follow up with you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye. Yeah.